Hello, everybody, and welcome to how to make a 5 volt clock signal from the Handtech AWG. Uh, again, welcome to my kitchen. This is the equipment we'll be using today the Handtech Scope Pro with all its attachments, the breadboard with the power supply header board and the Solbay power supply, some jumper cables, the hero of this project, the 2N2222 transistor, and two 10K resistors. And that's all you need. So here's my multi-SIM, which you can freeze and follow later on, but there to the left is the pinout for the 2N22, my circuit, and then how that drives a digital circuit. So why are we doing this? This is the output of the AWG, and you can see that I'm changing the amplitude to 2.5 volts. I then want to get an offset of 2.5 volts, which will then give me a 0 to 5 volt signal. I can't do that. The Hantech seems to have a hard limit of 2.5 volts on the output of its AWG. So even if I bring the amplitude down to say 1.5 volts, there we go, and I go back and I now vary the offset, again, I can only vary the offset plus or minus 1 volt for a total of 2.5, and that just won't cut it in the world of TTL. We need 0 to 5 volts. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the offset to 0 volts and the amplitude to 1 volt, and this will be the drive signal for the circuit that we're building that will give us our 5 volts TTL clock signal. So let's build a circuit. Again, the HERO, the 2N22 NPN transistor. Uh, from left to right, if you look at the flat side, it's emitter base collector, and we'll straddle three bus bars with that. And of course, as always, I'll speed this up. Now to the base, I'm hooking up a 10K resistor. This is our drive. This is where the AC switch goes into our transistor, which will be turning it on and off on the AC side of the pulse, on the DC side of the pulse, I'm sorry, the positive DC side. The, uh, the ground will hook up to the emitter because we're switching to ground. And then we're gonna have a 10K pull-up resistor to five volts, if I can get the leg straight. So what happens is, is as the AC signal coming in hits plus 5 volts, it turns on the transistor. The transistor pulls to ground and we get a zero. When it goes, when it goes above the threshold, the transistor turns off and the signal floats up to 5 volts. So the input and output are basically 180 degrees out of phase. And of course, there's my output, which will be my clock signal. Now we need to hook up a ground for the function generator as well. It has to have a common ground as that circuit. And the first thing I'm going to do is check to make sure I've got my 5 volts DC out of the, the header board because there have been some problems with header boards and hand techs, or uh, header bowls and soul bays, I should say. And now I'm going to hook up my scope probes. My channel 1 probe, I'm going to hook up to the output of my circuit where I'll be measuring the 0 to 5 volt clock signal. And on channel 2, I'm going to hook that up so I can show you the function generator signal as it comes out of the function generator, which is the one volt peak square wave signal. So let's flip this hand tech over to scope mode. And there we have it. We already have our zero to five volt signal. You can see there on the left channel one, uh, the bottom portion of the waveform is at ground and it goes up five volts. So we do indeed have a zero to five volt clock signal. Now, if we turn on channel two, there we go, there's our AC drive signal going in, and as you can see, it is 180 degrees out of phase. And let's move this up. Uh, no, that's voltage. There we go, and we'll slide it up. There we go. So now you can see that the, the AC signal is indeed uh, switching a, around the zero point, so there's a negative one volt and a positive one volt. And, uh, and what we have going on here is when the signal goes below zero, it, it's basically a, a do not care condition, but when it goes above zero, uh, so there's below zero, as it goes above zero, it switches on the 2N22, which then pulls the signal down the ground. So that 10K resistor to the five volts floats up to five volts until the 2N2222 turns on, and then that pulls the signal down the ground. So the drive signal input is 180 degrees uh, out of phase with the output and if I turn on the measurement portion of this again you can see here we go you can see that the input signal is plus or minus one volt and the output is zero volts to five volts and that's our clock signal 